What does climate change have to do with zombies? Apart from the fact that both of them trigger my anxiety, you might be thinking not much, but you might be wrong. You see, if you've watched the series The Last of Us, you'll know two things. Firstly, zombie shows are apparently now emotional roller coasters. And secondly, this version of the zombie apocalypse is triggered by climate change. To be specific, in the show, the heating of the planet causes a fungal parasite to adapt to higher temperatures, like the temperatures of the human body body. The fungi start controlling their human hosts and next thing you know you've got zombies everywhere in a tear-jerking coming-of-age drama about lots of innocence in an unforgiving world. And look, I cried a lot during this show. So could this actually happen? Could climate change trigger a mind-altering zombie-like pandemic? How is climate change already affecting our risk of diseases old and new? And what are the zombies that climate change is waking up from their sleep? today. Although, spoiler alert, they're less brains and more arctic tundra. I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And I'm also Adam, but from, like, the future. Now, long-term climates of the channel will recognize this video as one that I already published a couple of years ago, but to be honest, it didn't get enough views and I figured it was worth republishing it now that The Last of Us Season 2 is coming out. Okay, now back to past Adam. And joining me today is Marin Hunsberger. Hey, yep, I'm Marin, and I have a bachelor's degree in biology and environmental science, and a master's degree in medical microbiology from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, which basically just means I'm a huge germ nerd. Check out their fantastic science channel over here. With their background in environmental science and their focus on microbiology, Marin is the perfect person to break down the pandemic perils of climate change. So Marin, could the story of The Last of Us happen in reality? Nope. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching and no, wait, won't changing the climate also change how diseases spread? Yes, and we should be worried about some disease spreaders in particular. Things like insects and arachnids, or more scientifically speaking, creepy crawlies. I mean, I'm already scared of creepy crawlies and we haven't even got to the disease bit yet. So many of these creatures thrive in wetter seasons and at higher temperatures. So if we were to make the whole world hotter and particular regions wetter. That would expand the range of many of these bad boys. One of the main things we're worried about getting worse with climate change is mosquitoes because they need water to breed in and relatively warm conditions to survive. And they love to carry parasites and other pathogens that can be deadly to humans. We're talking things like malaria and yellow fever, dengue, chikungunya, Zika, St. Louis encephalitis, cross encephalitis, Eastern equine encephalitis. The list goes on because unfortunately mosquitoes are just really good at this. You mean really good at being really bad for humans. Exactly, Mundo. And it's not just mosquitoes either. Like, you know, ticks, those horrid little blood-sucking arachnids? They are spreading Lyme disease more and more, which research says could be linked to rising temperatures and lessened biodiversity, both expanding the ticks range. And there are even more disease spreading creepy crawlies whose habitats are likely to expand as we heat the planet and mess up different habitats. Things like the tsetse fly and the kissing bug, which is not as cute as it sounds. Okay, but as serious as it is that these diseases are spreading to new areas and more people, I can accept that malaria and Lyme disease aren't exactly the same as these zombie apocalypse in The Last of Us. Yeah, I mean, None of these diseases are pretty, but like Lyme disease isn't gonna turn us all into murderous gangs who are fighting to seize control of crumbling cities, you know? But is there a way that climate change could create brand new disease threats for us? I mean, COVID highlighted the risk of diseases jumping from animals to us humans. Yep, yep, yep. So basically, as the climate changes, things get a little hairy. And by a little hairy, I mean vertebrate animals that were not previously in a place are now suddenly in that place. Kind of like the insects that I was talking about earlier, many animals are going to shift their habitat ranges to deal with shifts in the climate. And that, plus the added likelihood of extreme weather events because of climate change, 
will push that wildlife into more contact with humans. And at the same time, humans are also pushing their way into wild spaces. The more mixing there is between wildlife and humans, the more threat there is of a disease jumping from one of those animals to a human and potentially being the spark for the next epidemic or pandemic. So all of this is making it sound more and more like the story of The Last of Us could happen. And I don't just mean the part where a washed up man filled with regret struggles to rediscover his humanity. I also mean the part where the brain controlling fungus jumps to humans. Well, like they mentioned right at the start of the very first episode of The Last of Us, most fungi can't normally handle the heat of the human body. What if the world was to get slightly warmer. As the planet heats up, we are seeing fungi adapt to survive at higher temperatures. And these heat adapted environmental fungi can now survive in and on humans and cause serious illness where they couldn't before. And that is actually something that is really happening and it actually is because of climate change. And one example is this yeast, it's called Candida auris. And the fungus from The Last of Us, it's a kind of fungi called cordyceps, does actually exist in the real world. Many kinds of cordyceps do actually hijack the brain and nervous system and turn their host into a kind of zombie. Okay, I'm really going to need you to say something reassuring, quickly. Well, the brains and nervous systems that cordyceps can hijack are not human or even mammalian or even vertebrate. These not so fun guys, yes, I went there, can only zombify insects, most notably ants. And I don't know if you've noticed, but insects and humans, are very different. I actually had noticed that. I mean, ants don't produce their own body heat. They don't have red blood cells. Their skeleton is on the outside. They have six legs. They have antennae. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Ants and humans aren't the same. The point is, the chance of a cordyceps fungus being able to evolve the tools it would need to infect us or even any kind of mammal anytime within the next few thousand years, if not hundreds of thousands of years, are incredibly slim. Okay, so huge relief, no zombies. Well, I didn't say no zombies because climate change could be waking some up from the permafrost. Oh my God, just when I was starting to calm down. So permafrost is land that is permanently frosty, or at least normally is, but global warming is heating polar regions extra fast, causing permafrost to melt and apparently waking up zombies. Okay, so we're talking about zombie viruses here, but I will say, I think this name is unnecessarily scary. The reason they're called that is because the viruses themselves have come back from the dead, so to speak. They were trapped in the frozen Arctic for tens of thousands of years and are now being reanimated as that permafrost thaws. So these viruses aren't going to turn people into zombies, it's the viruses themselves that are the zombies. Right, but that's not to say that they don't pose a threat. These are pathogens that we may not have been exposed to for many thousands of years or maybe ever, meaning that we are extra vulnerable to them. And some studies have actually unearthed old strains of the black plague and anthrax from the remains of humans and animals that were buried in the permafrost. And the anthrax incident did in fact lead to a small outbreak. So the thawing of the permafrost and the reanimation of these ancient germs is just another way that climate change increases the risks posed by infectious diseases. It's definitely reassuring to know that we're not going to turn into blood chilling, clicking zombies anytime soon. But at the same time, it's clear that climate change is putting us at more risk of disease, whether that's by waking up zombie viruses, increasing the number of diseases that can jump from animals to humans, or simply helping spread the diseases we already have more widely. But we're not helpless. We too can endure, endure and, and survive. survive. That's redundant. Yeah, it's, it's not great. The good thing is, scientists are working really hard to understand the threat these diseases pose. Research is helping us prevent the next pandemic, as well as get ready for what we should do if, or more likely when, it does happen. For example, we are getting better and better at developing vaccines, like the world's first ever malaria vaccines that are currently in development and about to roll out in some countries. It's so exciting. And other scientists are hard at work on the bacterial side of things to make sure that we still have antibiotics that will work against these kinds of diseases. We can also expand efforts to better protect people from the diseases that are already here today. Things like mosquito nets, bug spray, and better education about ticks. Plus we can invest more money into finding cures to diseases that are often ignored because they don't affect wealthier countries. 
yet. So even though The Last of Us was correct that two men can still fall in love even while the world around them falls apart, they were just a little bit off the mark with the idea that climate change could trigger a fungal zombie apocalypse. But climate change does put us at increased risk of disease, and if we want to protect ourselves as much as possible, whether from pandemics or from extreme weather, well then we need to stop burning fossil fuels. Now look, there's a lot of information in this video, and one particular question is how diseases jump from animals to humans in the first place, and why, when we talk about this process, does one particular animal so often get the blame bats. Well, then it's a really good thing that I have a video on my channel all about bats and their crazy immune systems and why we talk about them so much in the context of infectious disease. You can check that out over here. Okay, until next time. Bye. bye. Just one second. <sighs> well,